book in his mind. And the next day, he tried to get out of his hospital bed because he had an idea about the book that he wanted to call to somebody. And he set off all kinds of alarms and that was not a good idea. And in the very difficult and painful and frustrating weeks that followed, he kept trying to make notes for the book. And he couldn't read his notes, they would go off the edge of the page. But it was somehow working in his mind. Well, somewhere that time that winter, he connected with the wonderful Adam Frankel. Where's Adam? Right here. Right here. <laughs> and, and he and Adam bonded and found a new method for writing. And over the next five, six years, they researched and remembered and put all of this together, dictating, out went the tapes, back came reams of paper, 20 point type, triple spaced, to edit. And this long and laborious process has finally produced a book. But to me, it's not just a book, it's not just a story of a life, it's a lifeline. Because I'm convinced that the focus, the purpose that this book gave to Ted has given him also this last, late, full chapter of his life. So this party celebrates the book, but it also celebrates life. Here's to Counselor, here's to Ted, and thank you. standing ovation I've had in years. <laughs> As uh, Yogi Berra said upon his uh, retirement at Yankee Stadium, I want to thank everybody who made this night necessary. <laughs> I especially want to thank uh, Jack and Susan Rudin for hosting the greatest book party ever given in this city. I want to thank and by the way, Jack, I should warn you that uh, Don Rumsfeld is planning a book. <laughs> he said that he doesn't have enough material, and since Adam cut a lot out of mine to make it shorter, <laughs> I told him, I told Don that I have some leftover material, but he said he didn't want anything with the word left in it from me. <laughs> thank my wonderful wife, Gillian, who speaks all over the country. I receive emails and copies of email from audiences saying how persuasive she is. I now understand that. I was persuaded by every word she just said about me. <laughs> but as she said, uh, this is an important uh, occasion because uh, in a couple of weeks begins the first uh, full year of my ninth decade and I'm going to be ready on day one. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson's famous library was divided by Mr. Jefferson into three books of three kinds. And he called the, those categories memory, reason, and imagination. I'd like to think my book covers all three of those areas. Memory is history, and the history of my growing up with wonderful parents and siblings in Nebraska, where I received a first grade education as well as my 11 years of memories with John F. Kennedy are special to me and I think might help young people in this country see the advantages and opportunities in public service. Re by reason, I have to assume Mr. Jefferson meant philosophy. And when people ask how could it be that John F. Kennedy who had so many differences in his background from mine. He was a millionaire, he was a Harvard graduate, he was a war hero, he was a Roman Catholic. Those are all superficial. 
because when it comes to philosophy or reason, ideas and ideals, we were compatible for those 11 years and worked very well together. And as far as part three, imagination, I suppose by that Mr. Jefferson meant fiction. He had a large collection of great works of fiction. I want to assure you, none of my book is fiction. <laughs> but I also think imagination is what Kennedy and I possessed, as did my father back in Nebraska. And that is the imagination of how great this country can be and how much better the world can be. And that's what we've been looking for. Strong Thurman, uh, <laughs> who made it to uh, 100 years and said in his farewell, he concluded his farewell to his colleagues in the Senate, what I say to you, I love each and every one of you, especially the beautiful women. <laughs>